I'm going to share with you the five products you don't really need. So if you're trying to simplify things or save a little bit of money, then you can skip on these five things. I'm Delilah and I help people with curly hair like you get better at caring for and styling their hair so you can simplify your routine and wear your curls with confidence. So it's really common that when people start embracing their curly hair, they become product junkies. You start trying every single product that you see out there, what people are recommending, what a friend with curly hair uses, what an influencer is using, new product launches, and there seem to be more and more product types that come out over time. It used to be so simple, you'd have like, shampoo, conditioner, maybe one styling product like a gel, and now there's so many different types of products out there. So it can get overwhelming and confusing very quickly, and it is totally unnecessary, especially if you're just starting. You don't need a lot of these extras. I find that a lot of these products just confuse and overwhelm people, and they don't lead to any significant changes in the way that your hair turns out. So they're pointless. So I'm going to share five specific products that you really don't need. If you watch until the end, I will share five products that you do need. The first product that I recommend you skip is co-wash. Co-wash was really popularized with the curly girl method and it involves using a cleansing conditioner. A lot of people use regular conditioner to co-wash and so you're basically skipping shampoo altogether. I do not recommend this for like 99% of people. There are very few people that can get away with using a co-wash all the time. Most people need shampoo, like a regular shampoo, not a cleansing conditioner, not a co-wash. Co-wash causes so many problems because most people don't need this type of extra moisture and lack of cleansing. It causes tons of buildup. It causes lots of scalp problems. It can lead to hair loss sometimes. It leads to changes in your hair pattern where they kind of get stretched out and you start to lose your curl. It makes your hair dull and lifeless. It leads to lots of frizz and just like problematic wonky hair where it doesn't really want to cooperate. It's just so many negatives to this product. It is not something that you need. I do not recommend it to anybody really. Some people can get away with using co-wash and alternating it with shampoo. This is gonna work for you if you have the type of hair that doesn't really need to be cleansed often, like you can go a long time in between washes, then a co-wash can help. Or if you work out, like you need to wash your hair more often. For example, if you're working out on a regular basis and you don't wanna like start from scratch, you can use a co-wash and that will help you restyle your hair. But in general, it is not something that you need. You can totally skip it and just go along with your shampoo. The second product you don't need is a leave-in conditioner. And a lot of people are surprised when I talk to them and I tell them that you don't need any leave-in conditioner at all. You can get away, if you have the right conditioner, you don't need a leave-in conditioner. And this is part of the problem, you're not using the right conditioner. So maybe you feel like you need a leave-in conditioner. But if you're just using one because you think you need to include it in your routine, try taking it out and seeing if it makes a difference. You may just need to get a conditioner that's a little bit heavier, a little bit more moisturizing, and you can totally eliminate leave-in conditioners. You could also just leave in a little bit of your regular conditioner. I know there's people out there that say that the pH levels are different and they're formulated differently, and it is true that they're formulated a little differently. Leave-in conditioners tend to be a lot lighter than conditioners, but the conditioner seals your cuticle in your hair. So anything beyond that is, is just a styling product. So once you apply your conditioner, that should be your final like moisturizing step. And anything you're putting on after that is just extending the time between the now and your next wash. So you're basically styling your hair and you're holding the style, but the moisture should be sealed in with your conditioner. So a leave-in conditioner can help in certain situations. If you have really, really dry hair, if you really struggle with tangles, then you may need a leave-in conditioner. But again, you can just use your regular conditioner in that place. You don't need a completely separate product to achieve that result. Now on this tip with like extra unnecessary products that people think are uh, required is treatment products, things like protein treatments and bond builders and rice water rinses and apple cider vinegar rinses. None of that stuff is necessary. You don't need any of that. If you are using high quality products, shampoo, conditioner, and styling products, they should all be formulated already with the things that your hair needs. 
like moisture and protein. You don't need a separate protein treatment unless you have really severely damaged hair. You don't need a bond treatment unless you are coloring your hair pretty often, you're using bleach, then in that case, that is an exception, you may need it. But for the majority of people, that's not the case. Most people are not getting their hair bleached all the time. So you don't need these extra treatments. This stuff gets really confusing. Just make sure you're using high quality products. And if you're clarifying on a regular basis, then you shouldn't need anything. The one caveat is deep conditioners because a lot of people do need a deep conditioner because their hair is really dry and damaged, but not everybody does. For example, I don't use deep conditioner at all. My hair doesn't need it, I've got healthy hair. So if you've got healthy hair, it's not damaged, it's not particularly dry, you're not using heat styling, diffusing doesn't count, I'm talking about like straightening, you're not doing any chemical treatments, you don't need any deep conditioners or treatments or any of that stuff. Now the third product that I recommend you skip is oils. And this is really controversial, especially Whenever I've posted this on Instagram in the past, I get a lot of angry comments and messages from certain people and they are just really holding on to this idea that oil moisturizes the hair and it's just not true. Again, conditioner is what seals in the hydration that you get from water. Water is what hydrates the hair. Your conditioner seals your cuticle. So oils are completely unnecessary. Some people swear by them, some people love them. There's all these claims that oils do all these amazing things for your hair. But in my experience, from the research that I've done, it seems it's a lot of anecdotal type of evidence. Oils, the problem with them is that they cause a lot of buildup. And so they make the hair weighed down, heavy, sometimes greasy and it prevents your hair from accepting water, which is what your hair really needs. And this is the same problem we see with silicones and other like heavy ingredients that are difficult to remove. They're really just creating kind of a barrier on the hair and they're difficult to remove. Oil is very difficult to remove. And so when you wash your hair the next time, your hair is not really accepting all of that water that you're trying to give it through the shampooing process. And so it becomes a problem after a certain amount of time. It depends on your hair. For some people, they can put oil in their hair and they won't notice anything for maybe six months, a year. Some people will notice within a couple of weeks, like, oh, my hair is acting a little different. And what's happening is, like I said, your hair is having some buildup of oil and it's not allowing it to accept water. This is a big, big problem. And so in general, I do not recommend any oils. Now the next few that I'm going to mention are not necessary, but they are nice to have. First up is a specific type of hair towel, like a microfiber towel or a t-shirt towel that's designed to be used for your hair. These are really nice to have, they're super convenient, they work really well, but an old t-shirt works really well too, and it's completely free. So you don't need a hair towel. Don't spend money for no reason. If you're on a really tight budget, just get an old t-shirt and use that. That's all you need. You don't need to spend money on some extra product. Now, like I said, they're really nice to have, and I generally recommend t-shirt material over microfiber. I don't like the microfiber as much. I feel like it doesn't reduce the frizz as well as a t-shirt material does, so go with an old t-shirt and save the money and the space. Now, the fifth product, really nice to have but totally unnecessary is an expensive hair dryer and diffuser i'm talking about like the dyson and shark diffusers and dryers that have been really popular in the last couple of years yeah they're really nice they do speed up your drying time a little bit but they're totally unnecessary you can get the same results with a 30 dollars dryer from walgreens or amazon all you need to have is a nice diffuser where your hair fits in so it depends on if you have long or short hair, what size diffuser you would look for. But most dryers come with a diffuser attachment. So as long as the air gets dry, on, or sorry, as long as the air gets hot on the dryer and you've got a diffuser attachment, you can use it. Just don't use it on high heat. That's the only recommendation. But other than that, any dryer or diffuser will work. Remember that diffusing is not causing heat damage like it is when you are straightening your hair with heat or doing any other type of heat styling where you're applying the heat directly to the hair. It's in a diffuser, it's diffused, right? It's not direct heat on your hair, so you don't need to worry so much about heat damage in this case. Now I'm gonna throw in a bonus product because this is something that uh, people 
struggle with and spend a lot of money trying to find and that is a styling brush. So a styling brush is kind of new, I think, in the last couple of years to curly hair care. There's all these companies that are coming out with their own versions of styling brushes and they can get really pricey. Again, not something that you need. They work really well. They create nice, beautiful, frizz-free curl clumps. They don't work for every single type of hair. So there's some hair types where no styling brush is gonna help. They're really confusing to figure out for some people. They can cause tangles. So I think it's a 50-50, like a toss-up. For some people, it works really well. They pick it up, but for some people, it's just, you end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to use it. It doesn't work. You gotta try a bunch of different brushes. And again, you don't need a brush to style your hair. You can get away with styling your hair without a styling brush. So if you don't wanna spend money on a brush, if you've tried a few brushes and you're like, I can't figure it out, or you are just stressed out by the idea, you can let it go. Don't even bother with a styling brush. I'm telling you, I've tried a bunch and the difference is, is yes, it does make a difference in certain cases. Like I said, there's less frizz and your style lasts a little bit longer, but I guess that's a personal preference. You have to figure out if it's worth it for you to go through the trouble and spend the money to get just a little bit more out of your style where you're getting less frizz and a little longer lasting style. But again, not necessary. Now I promised to tell you what five products you do need. And so here's what you absolutely need to properly care for your curly hair. First is a good shampoo, not a co-wash, like an actual lathering shampoo. Then you need a really good conditioner. And I recommend a gel, but if you absolutely despise gel, I feel like people who don't like gel just really don't know how to use gel. <laughs> but don't get mad at me, that's my belief. Any styling product withhold. Okay, a curl cream is not a holding product. A leave-in conditioner is not a holding product. A volumizing foam is not a holding product. A product with hold is something like a gel, a custard. There are very few creams that actually do hold, but most of them do not. Um, styling products that provide some kind of hold, that's what you want. As your third product, a clarifying shampoo, super important, a good clarifying shampoo, and optional, fifth product so this really you need four products the fifth product is optional if you have damaged hair then a deep conditioner and preferably a deep conditioner that has protein in it don't get just a deep conditioner that's just a bunch of moisturizing ingredients make sure there's a little bit of protein in there and that's got you covered those five products are all that you need to get started and maintain your curls and if later on once you've kind of figured everything out and you're feeling a little more comfortable you want to branch out then you can add in some of the other extras that make things nice but are not exactly necessary. So now that you know exactly what you need, make sure that you're not making this mistake with your curly hair. If you really want to love your hair, I recommend you watch this video next. It's called The Biggest Curly Hair Mistake People Make and you'll learn one thing you can fix right now to stop feeling stuck and like you can't figure out your hair. Just click on the video you see on your screen and I'll see you there.